Yeah. That's called is a, that your that's next called video? It's called a cake. Ne your next video is six abs. second abs. <laughs> Sit second abs? Six seconds. Six, six second abs. Um, six seconds. That's right, here we go, one, two, three. No, that's it, you got, got it. it. Got I it. just popped an ab out. I'd like to see you film that. Um, That'll be a nice uh, information. Well. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Mega Mason. <laughs> Mega Mason. <laughs> Mega Mason. What inspired you to create Mega Mace Fitness? Well, it wasn't, it started off as just a production company yeah. in yeah. Philadelphia. And, and again, goes back to the business plan. I didn't have, what I really wanted to do, then my next, my next goal was I really wanted to direct feature films. Right. Um, but I did not write a business plan for that. And I didn't really do the research. And I kind of, mm -hmm. So my business plan kind of went up to, I'm going to have a production company. Right. And I learned it took quite a few years being in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not the place if you're real, like, especially if you want to do feature films. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Los Angeles is the, is, is the place to be for that. But I did while I was in Philly. Um, very fortunate, was introduced to the CEO of a pretty much a startup company at the time called Beachbody. Uh -huh. And uh, I was offered on no merit other than the CEO really wanted to work with kind of different people outside of Los Angeles, uh, an opportunity to do an infomercial, which at the time seemed like a very, um, uh, it was like kind of below me, right? <laughs> even though yes. I was making nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I will use an assumed name to do this. Yeah, this job will pay me more than I've ever had in my life, but it's below me. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, I to this day, I, I joke, but I have, I have very high um, standards, and when I say morals, I don't mean on a um, on a higher ground. I just mean like in the integrity of my work. Yeah, and I want to do good stuff, and I want to do, um, and I want to, I want to make people um, feel good about themselves and be better people, and so. In the back of my head, I was like, you know, infomercials have kind of like this dirty rap to them. And a lot of them, especially at the time, this, yeah. Is, uh, yeah. this is in the 90s, were really sketchy. Yeah. You know, all these claims and promises. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, you know what? I'd love to do it, but I really want to test the product out. And so now I'm in my early 30s and I start getting a little bit of a beer gut and, you know, you start to realize your body's changing. <laughs> and uh, and I, I didn't drink a lot of beer or anything, but I still, I like beer. You still get a beer gut. I like beer. I like beer a lot. <laughs> he likes beer a lot. Oh um, boy. Oh boy. I, and, and, and I tested this product out and it was pretty simple. Now it seems hysterical because we all know this, but it was like, huh, work out every day and don't drink beer. Huh. And I got in shape. Imagine that. It's Imagine an epiphany. That. Actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I changed my diet much. It was just at the time. It was just you moved. It was a regular work. Yeah, yeah. it's a regular you workout. You stood up and in moved. your thirties, you start to slow down. You're doing. You know, you're working more and you're exercising less. So that worked. Fast forward. I'm. I've now moved to LA, and my first um, opportunity to direct a fitness video, which I was also a member of the test group and helping develop it, was yeah. P90X. And P90X uh -huh. went through the roof. We Stratosphere. all remember P90X. Like every, everybody knows it. Absolutely. And, uh, like, and the, I think the funniest part of it is, you know, if you're in a, if, a room with anybody in like their mid 30s to their 50s, there's like probably half the room has either tried it, heard of it, tried it, done it, has a copy of it. Yeah. And there's probably one person who's <laughs> maybe done half of it. Yeah. <laughs> But everybody knows about yeah, it. Yeah, everybody knows about and it. And it doesn't matter. It made it so it's it yeah. sold through the roof. It's to you know, right now it's like in Guinness's most popular yeah. fitness video of all times. And this is really interesting about um another another discipline or tenant of what I believe in creating a sustainable artistic business for yourself is recognize what you are good at and what other people are maybe not interested in and and really own that. Yeah. So and so I had done P90X and it wasn't huge right away. It took right. a lot of, it took several years of building and I was doing more fitness videos, but I was also dabbling in doing other stuff. And, you know, I mean, if you would have asked me to do a car commercial, I would have said, sure, I would have done. And um, 
I didn't have a piece of that enormous success of P90X. It wasn't part of my deal. No sour grapes there. I got paid uh, to, what do I, to, to do yeah. the job. Yeah. Um, but I recognized that, and, and I did get credit for this from you know many people, that I recognized that I was an enormous part of the success of that product. Mm -hmm. Enormous. Because I just changed the way it was done. In short, I'll also share this, is don't be afraid to do things differently. Yeah. So um, if, you, if you go back, this is like 14 years now, I directed that in 2003. Yeah. If you go back prior to that, it was kind of like the Jane Fonda model of fitness. Mm -hmm. for the, for, you know, it was pastels. It was very like yeah. perfect. Yep. Like exercise was perfect. Yep. And when this, this creative directive came out for P90X and I was offered the job, I said, look, if you want it to, if it's going to be this, you're going to be this different in terms of like extreme home. Yep. I said, great. I want to, I want to shoot it completely differently. And I, I really threw out the rule book and I also didn't know any better. I just wanted to make something that I was interested in. Yeah. And that meant hiring people that had really been through the program who maybe weren't camera, mm -hmm. uh, ready. They certainly weren't models. Yeah. It was different types of wardrobe. It was different type of set. It was definitely different uh, type of camera work that they, nobody had yeah. done before. Mm -hmm. It was the way I shot it, which was straight through. Um, I did some rehearsals, which was unheard of. Yeah. So just throwing out the rule book and being, if you, if you really have a, um, a vision for something, yeah. that's one thing going for it. And then recognizing if you're really good at something. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, there's nobody who is like, oh my God, I've got to get that fitness job. Yeah. I can't wait to direct the next fitness right. video. <laughs> right. And, and I took that as an opportunity to say, I'm great at this. That made money. I get to work with great people um, like Frank, the camera guy, and <laughs> other people that are other people that are passionate about that side of the camera and this side yeah. of the camera and 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 money to do it. And I was like, this is I'm I'm really fortunate to be here. And I and I planted my flag. And that's when I added, this is answering your question full circle. That's when I added fitness to the end of the company name. Mm -hmm. It became Mega Mace Fitness. Mm -hmm. And now I'm um, very fortunate that I deal with clients all over the world in I, whether I'm consulting, um, now starting to sell my own brand, yep. um, or licensing it or still being a sought after visionary director for yeah. yeah. Well, without question, you are an authority. Absolutely. Man. Um, so I think this all threads into kind of your mantras. You kind of yeah. about never giving up. You're gonna tell you're gonna tell me my mom. Yet knowing when to give up. Yeah. So there's two yeah. there's there's two things that Please I love expand. going on, which is I'm sure you guys have have, have this because you are where you are because it never ever give up. Believe in yourself and never give up. It's also true, and one that I follow is no one to throw in the towel. No one to throw in the no towel. No one to throw in the mm -hmm. towel. Yeah. And you're like, well, how can those two coexist? Um, and the power is really knowing when to be focused on which. And, and they, they really do complement each other. Yeah. The, the, the main thing that I do is I focus in on the North Star. I go, that's my goal. That's how you also do a business plan. You go, mm -hmm. well, what's my, wh where's my goal? Um, and, and then everything starts to funnel towards that goal. Right. And so never ever giving up is is a way towards that goal but if you hit a roadblock and you can't get through that roadblock you have to know when to throw in the towel there you don't have to lose track of where you're going but it might be a bit of a detour right do you um, have to stay flexible and fluid to make those adjustments yeah. and i've had to throw in the towel and you can you can also use that metaphor differently i have and and any of us who've been in business or or life um have met with many, many challenges and I'm being polite and I've yeah. just survived and gone through yet another yeah. one, whether it's, whether it's a change in the industry and technology, mm -hmm. you know, you've invested in an entire suite that's, you know, a half million dollars over time of equipment that overnight is obsolete. 
Yeah. And some people try and hang on too long. Mm-hmm. They don't give up. Yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're right. Yes. Right? They go, you're absolutely they go, yes. no, That's this, how is, it was. this is, this is, it sounds it different. It's never yes. going to, and, yeah. and then, and by never ever giving up in that case, you could literally lose completely your business yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. So knowing when, knowing, so my business model has had to change over time, even in the fitness industry. Yeah. And it's really important to be uh, flexible, No. no Know that you are going to get knocked down, but then it's how you get back up and redirect yeah. uh, to get towards your goals. Again. That's cool, man. And how do you deal with with the challenging times? I mean, because we all have challenges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, and speaking more in business, maybe not personal, but in business, every business has challenging times. How have you dealt with challenging times with your business? You know, we, all of a sudden we're here and now we're we've gone through just recently and still going through this huge technology change. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, certainly in the voiceover world and the entertainment industry, what there was a whole system in place and that whole system has changed. I yeah. mean, I know Stacy records in a, you know, does does auditions right out of the house. You don't, and everybody used to have to come into a studio. True. And there's just, the industry has changed well, That in and so of itself, fast. Mm-hmm. it w- was a yin-yang because mm-hmm. it changed like well, people just sending didn't things the, in digitally instead of yeah. on CD with messengers yeah. and FedEx and yeah. right. you know all yeah. of all yeah. of those businesses because of the internet and technology and video has changed so rapidly. If you're not nimble and not willing to adjust, rethink, recalibrate, reinvest, you're you're, you're going to lose it. Yeah. Um, so for me, uh, without telling a long story about it, just the idea that my my platform for a while, my business model was I'm the top director. People were paying me more money than anybody else. And it went from, let's just simplify it and say programs, P90X was 13 videos on DVD. And now there are companies like uh, 24 Hour Fitness that are releasing a video a day. Right. And if I want to still be relevant mm-hmm. in the space with a 24 hour, I have to go, all right, nobody's going to pay me, you know, the million dollar budget that I had to create 13 videos. They want to create a video a day for a million dollars. How do I, how do I coexist? How do I make a living there? And that's been my challenge recently. Mm-hmm. And it, I've, I've hit the ground a couple of times. Um, but because I'm willing to adjust, shake hands, figure out, sometimes sit back and, and wait and watch and learn. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I've made some huge investments um, and I've had to pivot and readjust those huge investments because I go, well, I thought it was all going in this direction. Okay, but I still have this, but it's not really right there. I've got to just kind of like tweak and readjust the message and move it here. Mm-hmm. And that was really scary. I, yeah. but I, but you, you can't shake your, um, can't shake your fist at the sky and say, why me when it's all happening mm-hmm. to everybody, you have to be smart and just keep on evolving with it. Yeah, exactly. And that's a really yeah. good point. I love that yeah. you said that, it, that because if somebody's out there and things aren't going exactly the way that you want them to go, it's not just happening to you. Right. You know, everybody that you see and that you talk to, it happens to them too. Happens to Mason, Stacy, mm-hmm. myself, uh, Frank, our camera guy. And it's how we deal with it, right? It's right. how we deal with it that gets us out of it or keeps us in. Um, so I'm glad that you touched Well, and I think too, that, isolating man. yourself. Yeah. I think, I think when you create a community of people that are always striving and aspiring where you aren't necessarily the one at the top all mm-hmm. the time. I think that's really important. The people you associate yourself with and who you surround yourself mm-hmm. by, not just the people that say, oh, you're amazing. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. That are always pushing their own envelope and also pushing you to keep raising your bar. I think that's really important. Absolutely. Because you do that for you do that for us, for sure. Oh, yeah. And likewise. And um, it's, re- it's reinventing finding your value in other ways sometimes. Mm -hmm. So as much as I love um, truly directing and being on a set, I've found myself now consulting sometimes and having to find my value there. And at first, um, I was really threatened by the idea of consulting. 
and actually being more of an advisor because I was like, I hear, here I have all of this. I have all of these systems. I have all these formulas. I have all of this knowledge in place that um, I really felt like is, is something proprietary that I yes. can't share because if I share it, I'm going to lose my edge. Yeah. And I've very recently started to change that and go, you know what? I have this edge. Stacy and I were kind of joking about this. I have this, this edge and this knowledge, but I also have almost 20 years of practice with it. Exactly. And just mm -hmm. because I, I buy the same equipment that you might have in your studio, Chuck, Doesn't it does mean, not mean yes. I'm gonna, yes. I am gonna no. be able to produce the same kind yeah. of audio. Yes. Absolutely, do. man. So that so I've recently discovered that I actually really enjoyed this process of being a consultant mm -hmm. yeah. and going out there. And by doing that, and even though it's scary and taking that leap, it's I, bef just before I did um, this one this one particular client deal, I said, you know what? I also have to be open to the idea that maybe what I'm afraid of also is completely false. Mm -hmm. And and I, I should be open to the idea that this could really open a door that I don't even see. And that's exactly what happened. Because like, cool. you know what? We all are our own flavor of special sauce, right? Absolutely. So it's like you are unique. You and there, are. There, there's never going to be someone who has your and you guys perspective do this too. just you like guys, us. And so I, I'll just bring this full circle. VO Buzz Weekly is a laser-focused niche that has obviously uh, a space that has, and you guys got unbelievable amount of followers and you serve a purpose and that's amazing. And that is, that's also very successful. And that's, that is, that is another lesson in exactly what I'm saying yeah. is you're not trying to be all things to all no, people. We've, we've changed. You many recognize things. that yeah. there was this space that was open and it's, I mean, just even just going back to the 300th episode, what a blast. All, yeah. all those people there that were just yeah. so excited to celebrate you and this art and this space and, and time. That was a fun one, too. Yeah. Thank you for that. That means a lot coming from you because we, you know, you're our chosen family, but you also have a level of expertise and integrity that is, you know, so when you say, well done, it really does mean something. Um, so we appreciate that. But yeah. One huge part of your awesomeness is your desire to give back. Mm. It's been a huge part of your life. I mean, that started from when you were a kid and now, you know, as an adult. Um, talk about some of the, the cool ways that you have put yourself in that philanthropic space. Well, I'll, I'll first say that it is, it's no coincidence to me that my success and my volunteerism go hand in hand. Um, I say this to entrepreneurs because it helps them be successful. It's that simple. It is, um, it's a bit uh, self-serving um, because it feels so good and because you get more back. It's that simple. I mean, it just, it's the symbiotic way yeah. of living life. Yeah. And when I was starting my company, um, I, it, I was sucking wind <laughs> and I would, <laughs> for a long time. And I got to a point where I really started to feel sorry for myself. And I recognized that. And I said, this is, I can't do that. That's the wrong place to go. And I started volunteering as a big brother. And it changed my life immediately, mm -hmm. immediately. And I kind of knew it would, I guess that my parents somehow, you know, my, my parents had volunteered, but not like that. But it just kind of clicked. I was like, as, as sorry as I'm feeling for myself, somebody else out there, um, I've got something to give. And that's what I should do right now. So yeah. I feel... I feel better about myself. Yeah. And uh, my little brother, um, Shaquill, mm -hmm. um, really just opened my eyes to that. And from there, I went on and just get, kept giving back more and more and more and traveled the world volunteering. I, I found myself really drawn to uh, children's causes and um, volunteering in orphanages. Went to Mexico for three years, like um, once a once a month, uh, a group of people from LA would go down there and created videos, yeah. had fundraisers. And, um, to, to this day, that group of people is really near and dear to my heart, Friends of El Faro, and volunteered in Haiti after the earthquake at a, a Love a Child orphanage. And ultimately, 
um, this all led me to realizing that I wanted to adopt my girls, which you two mm-hmm. are um, part of their lives. They're godparents, yes. which is a beautiful story. They're in amazing itself. girls, yeah. and that and so that so the volunteering literally led me to my family, which yeah. is one of the happiest. Play, did, I, did I say happiest? The happiest. Just happiest. Come out? You can I just say came happy. out as a ha- happy. Like, but why not? We celebrate because you're very happy <laughs> and phlegmy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my family is my happy place. Yeah. They you are. Know, being around the table yes. at dinner yeah. with uh, with family is, mm-hmm. you, you'll realize no matter how hard you you work to make it and, yeah. and make a successful business, that that is ultimately why you're doing it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Exactly. And so yeah. volunteering is, is a cornerstone, a pillar to the success of any good business, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Love it. If you could capsulize what you think are the keys to your success and longevity, Mm -hmm. career longevity, what would you say they are? I'd sum it up and say, uh, recognize what you're good at. Um, Recognize what you're not great at. Write a business plan. Don't say, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. Write a business plan. If you really, you know, it, it interests me how how artists in particular will say, I'm never going to get, I just got to believe in myself. I just got to do, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. Try to get them to write a business plan. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, but I, I, but I am telling you, and it is not the hardest thing to do. No. It's kind of sucks because it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But write the business plan. I mean, it's almost a, yeah. it's almost a guarantee. That's the thing that I, that I wish people would understand. Is the is business plan is a plan. It's not a wish. Yeah. So it's that, a whole different level of accountability when you have is. to put it and down. And you on and paper. it's for you personally because you're the one who's who's written it. Mm-hmm. And every time now you're given a choice as you're growing your business, you as opposed to going like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe I'll take this. Oh, I just got an offer to do that. Well, I'm not really. I'm not really a voiceover artist. So I want to do this, but but I have this opportunity to do that. And it, it takes you off the goal. But if you're if you're going towards your north star, which is in your business plan, you have a real opportunity to get ahead of the group because you're not diverted as often. Exactly. Or if you do have an opportunity to be an intern for a voiceover company, you're doing it because you recognize that it is going to help you get to where you want. So now it becomes yeah. a part of the business plan. Be, well, yes. it, you, and you can and yeah. you can adjust your business plan, but it's just very very calculated about how you're going to get there, and you learn. Yeah. It's it's as much about knowing what you're going after and what you're not going after. Mm-hmm. And that's where there's some real value. Yeah. And then the last thing is certainly putting saving, paying, paying yourself first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is so important. Yeah. That gives you this level of security yeah. and, and pride um, and giving back. And mm-hmm. if you do all those things, it's pretty hard not to be successful. Absolutely, man. You'll get Gosh. a 12-pack ab. Yeah. Abs. No, yeah. just one. You'll yeah. get an ab. Yeah. That's called Wait, is that a, your that's next video? It's called a K. Ne- your next video is abs. six second abs. Six. <laughs> Sit second abs? Six seconds. Six, six second abs. Um, six seconds. That's right. Here we go. One, two, three. No, that's it. You got abs. Got it. I just popped an ab out. I'd like to see you film that. Um, That'll be a nice uh, information. Well, we are so proud of you. We really are, man. Um, we you love you to death. Love you guys. And um, now you can answer the mystery question. The mystery question? Yeah. I, Pick any card. Pick a card. Pick a card. card. Uh, for our voice actors out there, read it as your favorite character. <laughs> my favorite? Your best character voice. Yes. My best character voice. Yeah. You guys didn't ask me anything about my voiceover career. Just come on. I mean, well, we, I, did, we did. We did. I mean, we did I did. have a brief. I was, I was a uh, Pennsylvania lottery voiceover. <laughs> that was my only professional voiceover. You could do it as your there McDonald's you go. And then commercial. he knew when to quit. <laughs> oh, this is good. Um. Get, I don't have I was any, kidding I don't have about any the characters. characters. I was, no, I was thinking I'm going to do it as Chuck. Frank, I'm gonna, will you I'm read gonna, this I'm going to do it as Chuck. I'm going to do it as Chuck <laughs> do it, Durant. Do oh my God. Oh my God. Chuck, imitation of me. It was, it was Chuck imitation Chuck of me. <laughs> Dude. 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 That's so good. What would you like your great, great grandchildren to know about you? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, now well, answer it as yourself, please. <laughs> answer it as myself. Um, uh, that's a great question. I would, I would, um, my great, great grandchildren, I would just, I would like to be known as a great dad. 
you know, more than anything um, that I, cause, cause my dad inspired me cause he was a great dad. He was, he was fun and I know how much he loved me. And um, I'd like the same of that for my girls and their kids and, beyond, and so yeah. on. Well, your dad was a great dad and yeah. he'd be so proud of you and you are an amazing father. Absolutely. You see it in your beautiful, oh, you, yeah. and, you, you and your absolutely? beautiful wife, Anna. Absolutely. Ab- you say absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, you no, and no, Anna are a man. great team. Yeah, you are. We you are a great dad. You're, you're a wonderful father Thanks, and you're a wonderful friend and you're a wonderful you. human being. Thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah, Thanks, you're just a great guy, which is why we had you on the show. Yeah, that's it. The great I'm guy glad we're show. Friends. Yeah, <laughs> have an apple. Here. dude, dude. Here. <laughs> well, that concludes our two-part episode with the awesome Mason Vanderwald. Make sure you stick around next week because we'll have some brand new VO Buzz Weekly for you. Yes, we will. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to follow all of us on social, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little, little buzz. buzz. Hi, I'm Mason Benderwald from Mega Mace Fitness Productions. I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. Don't forget to write your business plan and don't forget to call your mom. Chuck says that's funny. <laughs>